welcome back to Litigation Help. My name is Heather Hui Litwin, and today we're going to talk about a procedural tip in family law that may well save you a lot of time and money. It's called a request to admit. So joining, joining us here is our regular guest, uh, Shmuel Stern of Disclosure Clinic. Hi, Shmuel. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. So, yes, yeah, Shmuel, you were telling me, you were getting all excited about this, this um, procedural tip, which is why I call request to admit. So what is it? <laughs> Tell us all about it. Okay. Um, you know, I usually talk about disclosure. When we talk about disclosure, we're usually talking about, you know, expansive, how much you have to give, right? So a request to admit is kind of the opposite. We're going to try to narrow. And it, uh, requests to admit are not special to family law. They exist in civil litigation, um, where much of the case law, where people have argued over it, um, comes from that side of the law, not from family law. Um, and But but we'll, we'll discuss it. I think the best analogy before we even begin is uh, my daughter asked me uh, the other night, like two nights ago, she said, can you take me to, to the store? And I said, you know, I'm busy right now. Let, let's do it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then tomorrow came. And of course I was still busy. <laughs> and she said, um, okay, let's go to the store. And I said, I, well, I can't do it. Maybe, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> and she said, but you said, and any parent knows, but you said is the strongest argument a child up to, let's say 16 has. Because after 16, they, they say, well, you didn't say, so why can't I do something, right? You didn't say, I, I couldn't. So, but, 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 but for younger kids, they say, but you said, I'm holding you to your word. And, and in law, um, many people, uh, clients will come to me and say, you know, they promised me that I would be able to keep the car. And now they're saying not, you know, like the, right. Or I, I could stay in the house and they said, right. So, but that has no, that holds no water. Um, what, what people say, and there is a way in law where you can hold people to their word. And that's what a request to admit is. And what we're going to do today is to explain it really from the ground up to explain what, what it's supposed to do, how to do it. I'm going to show you the actual documents and the, the technical problems that come up with it. Okay. Mm, sounds All right. great. So, so let's get going. Okay. I created a quick um, uh, slideshow, not so much to just to keep things moving. So what is a request to admit? So it's, it's a process where we are dispensing with proving facts, okay? Again, going back to the, my daughter, you said X, so you can't take back your word, mm -hmm. right. okay? And, and and why is that helpful? That's helpful because then you don't, you're not gonna be fighting over facts. If the matter has to keep going through the court process, you wanna, you want to narrow what the facts are so that you can then, overlayer it with the law and apply the law. Now, applying law is not necessarily an easy process. Many people think going into a legal, into the legal process, whether in court or not, that, that the law provides answers. And then sometimes the law does not provide answers. It provides a framework to figuring out an answer. And so you can still be fighting over that, but at least the underlying facts you're not going to be fighting over. And people obviously fight over facts all the time. So how, what, what if we can start, uh, nail people down, in a sense, to their facts um, and minimize areas of dispute, which would in turn minimize the cost of litigation? And so that's the point of it, okay, to, to narrow the facts that are in dispute, because people do fight over facts. Okay, so now let's start to about, talk about the beginning and the end of a, of a court case. So what, at the beginning of a court case, there is a Form 8 application, right? Or a Form 15 motion to change, but let's just talk about the application. And in the application, it asks, what are the facts that you're relying on? It actually asks you that question. And so the applicant will list all of that. And then you get the, and let me just show you in an application itself, Right. Here's the, the this is the, the ministry right. application. Yeah. Page three has a page with family history. OK, so the applicant's birth date is a fact. Was the 
<laughs> right? In January 1st, 1998. I'm just making a number, right? So right. It's like there has to be a date there. And that is a fact, right? right. And so all of these things uh, from a very basic level, these are basic facts, right? right. Um, but many people will be fighting over the date of separation. Yes. We know that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, many people fight over the definition of who is the child living with at, at any mm -hmm. point in time. And many people will be fighting about the start of the relationship if it becomes yes. relevant. Okay. Because because if there's no marriage or if there was pre-marriage cohabitation, right. then then that start date is always a little murky. Yes. Okay. The point though is that there are facts and and as you go through the rest of this form there's a place to, where where the court asks important facts supporting my claim important right right uh, right fact 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 and we keep we keep using those words okay yeah. and so 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 then you get to the form 10 answer okay so now the the, the respondent is now looking at the application and the court asks at question right over five, is the family history page, that page number three, is it correct or is it not correct? Right. Okay. And if it's not correct, you're supposed to attach. <laughs> so the ministry version doesn't have it, but the lawyer's version does. Huh. You're supposed to attach the family history page from the application and um and then you can um, you can tell what facts you agree with and which are facts you disagree about the family history page. Now, obviously, you're going to tell your own facts here. I know it's small. So here in the for the respondent, the respondent gets their turn to tell the facts that as they see them, and the facts can conflict with the application. That's okay. That that's that's why we're talking about a request to admit because we're going to be. We're going to see which facts we can agree on, okay? And um, I'm just looking again. This is this form is a little bit uh, um, deficient, but there there are there usually is uh, pages at the back which says which legal claims do I agree about, right? At, there are boxes regarding regarding which claims because there are one second there are these as I said deficient. So we know about these boxes, right? Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and so you can say well i agree i could i agree with equalization just as an example that there is there, there are pages where you can do that i don't know why it's not on this form um and but that's not what we're talking about today we're not about agreeing about the claims the legal claims we're agreeing about facts mm -hmm. okay so we're going to come back we're going to keep coming back to that mm -hmm. so that we're talking about facts okay at the end Okay, I cited a random case that talks about facts that are um, admitted to using this request to admit tool. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm just showing you a random case, mm -hmm. happens to be a good case in mm -hmm. life, where the party provided, okay, the wife here provided this document called request to admit, which we're going to show you and we're going to go through. And she listed the facts mm -hmm. that she wanted the other party to either admit to or to deny. And the husband decided he wasn't going to respond to this document called request to admit, which we are going to talk about has ramifications. And the biggest ramification is that the facts that the wife put forward are accepted as true. And why I'm showing you this um, court case is that the, the judge says mm -hmm. the husband never delivered the response. There is a rule, which we're going to go through. I'm skipping it for a second. And, and now the court's going to make a decision based on facts. And the facts that the judge court used in order to... Um, in, in order to come to its decision were the facts that the wife put forward on this document. So that's huge. That that impacts the, the, the whole case as to which facts the court's going to rely on. So, so the beginning of the court case talks, you know, that's where we're starting to narrow which facts we're agreeing to or not. And then as the court, as you get to the end of a court case that is contested, 
you have really have to think about which facts the, the court is going to be looking at and considering. So so that that's the beginning and the end. Okay. So and, and then what and then based on those facts and applying the law, you're going to get a court order. And so that's the end of the court case. So um, so it's, it's it's best to start thinking about this as soon as you can start thinking about contested facts. Okay. So what is a special rule? It's rule 22. And uh, let's just quickly look at it. Okay. Now, <laughs> it's funny because the, the, the rule de deals with two kinds of facts that can be dealt with, okay? And this is a little bit confusing, so I'm going to go a little out of order, okay? Um, oh, oh Stuhl, can we just remind the viewers that we're looking yeah. at the, the family law rules in Ontario? Yes, this is the family law rules in Ontario. I can imagine every province has a similar rule, but not okay. the same, necessarily the same. Right. Again, this is not special to family law at all. Right. Um, and so, okay, let's start with this one. At any time, by serving a request to admit form, which we will look at, a party may ask the other party to admit for the purpose of the case only that a fact is true or that a document is genuine. Okay, so there are two kinds of facts here. One is that a fact is true or not, or that a document is genuine. So we're not gonna we are, we're not gonna spend so much time on the document is genuine. We're gonna spend more time on the facts because that's usually more common. Mm -hmm. But I do want to talk about the the documents. So that's this is like the secondary thing. So it's funny because it talks about documents here at yes. number one. And so what does it mean that a document is genuine? And the answer is many times, and especially nowadays with emails and texts people will submit a piece of paper or a PDF, let's call it, that has, that purportedly is a email sent from somebody to somebody else, right? Right. For whatever reason, I'm not even getting into the why. We're not talking about the, like what's, what's so good about this document or not for the case. I'm just talking about whether that email was tampered. Is it a true version of the email that you are saying it is? Okay. And many people fight over that, rightfully so, because unfortunately there are people who do tamper with evidence. Mm -hmm. And um, part of this process of the, of the Form 22 is that you can attach specific documents and you can just ask the other side, do you agree that this is an an accurate version of the document that it says it to be. Another example, this is a bank statement, right? Do you agree that this is a bank statement? Often there'll be a, like a promissory note that's handwritten, you know, and and you want you want the other side to agree or not that this document, that they are aware that they're, they're not saying that this is a fake document, okay? Which, by the way, comes up a lot, right? Um, so... So the point, so that's that's on on admitting whether or not a document is a true copy, basically, of what it says it's supposed to be. Okay, that's the documents. Now let's go back to facts. Okay. Right. So the party, so 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 you are to serve this document called the Form Twenty Two, and then the other party has twenty days to respond. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what the I could tell you the 20 days includes weekends and holidays. So you mm. go get on it. And the 20 days is, is, is surprisingly hard. In other words, take it seriously. You have 20 days. And if you, if you don't think you're going to have enough time within the 20 days to answer the questions, you better write to the other party and say, I will not be able to get this done within 20 days, but I will be able to get it done within 40 days. I'm just making that up. Right. So, and will you agree that I can submit it within 40 days? And if they say yes, great. Right. If they say no, then you have to bring a motion to extend the time. I know exactly. Right. OK. And so that 20 days is very important. And um, I, I want to say something a bit more, but let's get let's let's just get the basics here. And. um 
within that 20 days, you're going to serve a form 22A, which I will show as well. And mm -hmm. you're going to do one of the two th following two things with this form 22A. You're going to either deny that a particular fact is true. Right. Okay? Or, or, or regarding the, do the documents, fine. Or you're going to refuse to admit that a popular a particular fact mentioned is true, right? And you're going to give reasons for each refusal. Oh. Now, this is important. This is mm. so important. And we will get to it again. Is that A, where it talks about admitting or denying, yes. you just have to write the word admit or deny. You don't have to explain why you're, okay. you're responding. This is so important. Wow. It's only if you refuse that you have to also give a reason for the refusal. Huh. Okay? So it's interesting little quirk there, but you sh that should help you not get overwhelmed if you are served one of these guys and you need to respond to it. You don't have to give a whole, uh, like a lecture for each item. And, yeah. and many times there are many items. Okay, so we'll come to that. Lastly, if you make an admission, you are stuck to it. So again, request to admit. You are admitting a fact. Okay, so let's, the, the parties got married on January 1, 2000. Okay, just uh, that's a fact. And you admit to it. Okay, now what if you won't change your mind and you say, no, I got it wrong. Okay, so the only way you're going to be able to do it is with the other party's consent or the court's permission. Which means a motion? That means a motion. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you the test. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. The uh, 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 what's not said here is that if you don't respond, you're deemed to admit the um the the facts. Okay. So you need to take this seriously. Okay. To respond to it. Okay. Let's let, let's go through the practicalities of it. Um, okay, sounds good. So let's look at a request to admit. Mm 